During the pre-draft process, the grades on Panthers outside linebacker Shaq Thompson were mixed. On one hand, you had teams that valued his explosive athleticism and versatility and thought that he could be of asset to their defensive scheme. On the other hand, you had teams that concerned about where he would project at the next level. Was he a linebacker or was he too undersized and need to play safety? The Panthers valued Chat Thompson's versatility and drafted him at 25. The thought process was that he would allow them to be able to stay in their base defense and defend spread offenses, giving them value in both coverage and run support. Over the years, the NFL has evolved to where teams are using five or more defensive bats on the field more often. This is to better to defend these high-powered passing offenses. From 2013 to 2015, the Panthers generally followed this trend as the team primarily operated using a nickel package. However, after drafting Shaq, the team went back to using more three linebackers on the field as they felt Shaq could give them that same ability and coverage that a nickel corner could, but give them better run support. So what we saw was the emergence of the Buffalo nickel package where, when teams would go with multiple wide receiver sets, instead of subbing Shaq out for a nickel corner, they'd leave him on the field as they trusted him in that role. However, ultimately, having Luke, Shaq, and TD on the field at the same time put the Panthers at a significant personnel disadvantage. Teams were able to spread them out and isolate Shaq and TD against these faster, quicker slot receivers, and the Panthers were just unable to match up, and teams were able to shred them through the air. So in 2018, the Panthers went back to playing more of a nickel defense, and now Shaq was in a position where he had to fight with both Thomas Davis and Captain Munderland for reps. However, now with TD and LA, Shaq can finally focus on playing linebacker exclusively and will finally get to see what he's made of in his contract year. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at what Shaq brings to the table and what we can expect to see from him in this upcoming season. An area where Shaq stood out to me was as a contained defender against the run. According to data from Pro Football Focus, Shaq ranked top 20 among all NFL linebackers in run defense grade. I think his ability as a contained defender had a lot to do with that. He was used very effectively as a run blitzer where he was able to explode off the edge, beat linemen to the point of attack, and just wreak havoc in the backfield. He also does a good job of taking on pulling linemen. Against the Dallas Cowboys, watch as he takes on his pulling guard, gets his hands inside, and he's able to disengage from him and chase the ball carrier down from behind. Now let's watch him against the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle's going to try to run this power play towards Shaq and pull this tackle around for the kickout block. But watch here, Shaq does a good job of taking on this tackle with his inside shoulder. He's going to keep his outside arm free. This allows him to spin off the block, and he has enough speed, athleticism, and awareness to run the ball carrier down from behind and strip the ball loose. Unfortunately, there's no Panthers players in the vicinity of the area to complete the turnover on that play. And then watch him here against the New York Giants. You see the Panthers are coming out in the 30 front, so Shaq's going to be your edge defender. So with the team switching to more of that hybrid scheme, this could be an area where he provides value. Shaq's going to have to set the edge and not let Saquon Barkley bounce his ball outside. So you're going to see him scrape, and then he does this rip to disengage from this blocker. And now he forces Barkley back in towards his pursuit, and the Panthers are able to get the tackle for a loss. Shaq's also very effective as a weak side linebacker coming back on the backside and chasing ball carriers down from behind. Oftentimes, teams will leave that backside edge player unblocked as they don't expect him to be a factor in the play, but with Shaq's speed and athleticism, you have to account for him at all times. Against zone blocking schemes, he's explosive off the ball and he doesn't allow linemen to reach block him and he's able to still get in and make plays. And then he's also very effective shooting gaps as he's explosive off the ball. Against the Seattle Seahawks, watch as Shaq's going to shoot this C-gap and force the ball carrier to bounce the ball outside right into the teeth of the defense. So you just see as the Panthers move to more of this hybrid scheme, the way different ways that Shaq could be effective. Shaq's also a very effective pass rusher as according to data from Pro Football Focus, he's accumulated 27 quarterback pressures over the past two seasons. On this first play, the Panthers are going to run this overload blitz to the strong side of the formation. As you can see here, the running back has a choice to make. Does he take Shaq on the inside, who's the most dangerous blitzer out of the two, or does he take James Bradbury coming off the corner blitz? Unfortunately, he takes Shaq, who makes him pay for it, and has him on his back questioning the meaning of life. Shaq's speed and explosiveness off the edge also make him a very effective blitzer. Here he comes off the ball so fast that Ezekiel Elliott's not able to get to him in time. 
And then against the Seattle Seahawks, you're going to see this offensive tackle start out with a double team on the defensive end. But watch how fast Shaq's going to be just coming around this corner. And the tackle's not going to be able to get to him in time. And before you know it, Shaq's already in Russell Wilson's face. What I also like about Shaq when he pursues the passer is even when he gets knocked down, he just gets right back up so quickly and he's still able to get in, get in on the sacks and make plays. So you just see how relentless he is when he's in a pass rush situation. And on his last play, you know, you can see the skill set of Shaq as a pass rusher as he looks like a defensive end in this case. Against the New Orleans Saints, you're going to see Shaq come off the edge here. He's going to do a good job dipping and bending. Now watch him rip to get rid of this tight end. And they're able to bend the corner and get the sack on Drew Brees. So as a pass rusher, I think Shaq can also add value to this team. Now let's look at Shaq's read and react ability. I think he does a great job of avoiding second level blockers, scraping from gap to gap, sifting through traffic, and being able to find the ball carrier and get him on the ground. I mean, as you see here, it helps when you play with a guy like Luke Keekley. You know, you see them communicating pre-snap, and the Panthers are able to get a goal line stand on that play. So it'll also be interesting to see if Luke and Shaq can develop that same level of chemistry that Luke and TD developed over all of those years. A lot of people have had concerns about Shaq's size playing in a 30 front. I'm not concerned about it because when you watch him on film, he doesn't really have bodies on him that often. He's often able to use his quickness and athleticism to be able to sift around all of that and then pursue the ball carrier and help get in on the tackle. I think his tackling improved a lot over this past year as well. You know, I think in 2017 he had some issues with wrapping up at times, but he did a much better job of that last year. So it'll be interesting to see how Shaq continues to evolve as a linebacker playing next to Luke Keekley. Shaq's read and reactability really shines when he's able to play in space. He does a good job of diagnosing plays quickly and he closes to the ball in a hurry. He's often responsible for the curl flat zone in the Panthers heavy zone defensive scheme. The teams try to attack the Panthers with those quick short passes to the flats. But with Shaq's closing speed, quarterbacks think that they have a guy open. The next minute Shaq's right in his chest and knocking the ball loose. What I want to see next year though if the Panthers can improve this pass rush and start to see Shaq start to undercut some throwing lanes and force turnovers and get some of those interceptions. So we'll see how he improves with that improved pass rush to be able to play behind. Now an area where I want to see Shaq improve on this season is being more disciplined with his gap assignments. We talked about earlier about how he's at his best when he's able to aggressively play fast downhill, but sometimes opposing offenses notice that and they'll design plays to take advantage of over-aggressive linebackers. Let's take a look at this play against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are going to run a split zone concept which is intended to do just that. What you'll notice here is they'll start with this inside zone look with the lineman flowing towards the strong side. Shaq reads this, so if the play is going away from him, he has to aggressively fill this backside gap to prevent cutback lanes. However, what you'll notice is his tight end is coming across the formation for the kickout block. And you'll notice both Luke Keekley and David Mayo are reading this. So they're going to be flowing with the tight end in the opposite direction. Shaq doesn't see this, however. So as a result, with Shaq flowing one way, Luke and Mayo flowing another way, Luke and Shaq end up in the same gap. As a result, this allows the running back to bounce the ball outside and there's a whole lot of open green in front of him. So as you can see there, you just have to be more disciplined with your gap assignments as a linebacker on this defense. Then against the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland's going to run this power play towards the strong side of the formation. What you'll see here is Shaq's going to flow with the running back, but he loses track of his gap assignment and once again ends up in Keekley's gap. Once again, you'll see a big hole open up and the Browns are able to get a big gain on the play. And lastly, against the Bengals again, you're going to see the Bengals run the split zone concept again. Shaq flows with the play side, Luke's flowing with the tight end, and they both end up running into each other and end up in the same gap. It didn't make him pay for that that time as KK made a great play, but you just see, you know, you want to see Shaq be more disciplined with his gap assignments. Now the one thing I think will take Shaq from being just a solid NFL starting linebacker to being an elite caliber linebacker mentioned with the better players in this league is his coverage ability. Now I say dominant in coverage because I don't think he's a bad coverage player as is. You know in zone coverage he has great closing speed, great read and reactability. 
He gets to where he needs to be, and you know, and he gets guys on the ground and limits yards after the catch. So, you know, in zone coverages, he's just doing his job. But what I want to see is take his game to that next level. I want to see him start to recognize these routes quicker, you know, make plays on the ball, start undercutting some of these throwing lanes and forcing turnovers. Then as far as man coverage, again, he's solid. You know, he does his job. I think he only gave up one touchdown all year. But I want to see him start to shut down these opposing tight ends. I think he has that build and athleticism to be able to be an effective weapon in that area. According to Football Outsiders, the Panthers ranked 24th in the NFL in defending opposing tight ends. So I think with Shaq's ability and skill set, this is an area where he can possibly, you know, fill that gap and help take this defense to the next level. So overall, you know, I think Shaq's got a well-rounded skill set. I'm excited to see him finally come into this season not having to look over his shoulders or worry about splitting reps. And I think we'll finally get an idea of who he is as a player and get that and see if he can justify that big contract extension that will be due next offseason.